can see the really nice view here from uh, the top of uh, Mount Hamilton here at Lick Observatory. Got a lot of telescope domes right here. Over here is the dome for the 36-inch Lick Refractor Telescope. history of the building, and how it got up here, and then uh, run through how uh, the telescope we used, was used back in 1888. Um, telescope and facility were uh, basically donated with, by a grant from James Lick back in the 1800s. Uh, James Lick had been born in uh, uh, Pennsylvania in 1796, uh, made his fortune down in South America selling pianos and doing woodworking and such. Uh, at one point, uh, he decided to come back to the United States in 1848, and that was a good time for him to come back. He had about $30,000 in gold that he had raised in his business in South America, and came to San Francisco in 1848, and what happened in 1849 was a gold rush, okay? Um, what happened then was a lot of the people here thought they'd go up and make their fortune in the gold rush, so they sold their land in the Bay Area so they could buy supplies. And the person that bought their land was James Lick. At one point, he owned about half of San Francisco. Uh, he owned land all the way up and down the peninsula, San Jose, he owned Catalina Island in Southern California, etc. Um, he decided that uh, part of his will it was going to be to build uh, the world's most powerful telescope so that he could leave a legacy of, of learning for people and humanity. Uh, Mount Hamilton was chosen for two reasons. One is that um, it was, it was a, on a mountaintop. It was away from the city. San Jose wasn't very big at that time. Uh, and by being on a mountaintop, it meant that they didn't have light pollution from the city, and they didn't have as much atmosphere to look through, which makes it things clear and, and the objects moving around less in the telescope. Um, 1876. Uh, Mount Hamilton was decided as a spot. They made an agreement with the County of Santa Clara. The County of Santa Clara would build the road up here, and then James Lick's estate would build the observatory here. Okay, so in 1876, if you all came up from San Jose, that's pretty much the same road that was built in 1876. Okay, windy, narrow, and not that steep actually. And they, they built it the way they did because they knew that everything that was coming up on the mountaintop was going to be coming up that hill and it was going to be coming on a wagon pulled by horses. Okay, so they kind of compromised so that it wouldn't be, it would, wouldn't be less, uh, uh, would be less of a burden for the animals and such. Uh, photography wasn't into uh, the development stages yet for astronomy. Okay, so all the observing up till that time People sat at the eyepiece and with a little book, with a pencil, and drew what they saw, took measurements with uh, measurements that were on the eyepiece, etc. So you'd sit the whole night at the top of this 26 foot ladder. Okay. Very uncomfortable. Yes? Yes. Well, the, depending on how it's polished, will determine where it focuses the light, right? So, and that's what determines the length of the, of the tube. Okay. So, so this is the, the way they polish this glass. It focuses and bends the light so that it focuses. It had to be lengthy, right? Okay. Good question. Uh, so, so what, what? But, but the astronomers they have to sit on ladders, right? And, and one of the things when observing is you don't want the air inside the observatory to be a different temperature than the air outside because of the air movement, okay? It's like a mirage on a road, right? If you see the air going, it's blurry behind it. Um, the same thing here. Um, so basically, um, the dome gets opened on that big slit there. There's two doors that open up onto the outside of the dome. And that lets the air in from the outside before observing. 
and they try and get the same temperature in here. So if it's 35 degrees outside, it's going to be 35 degrees in here. Okay, so you can imagine wearing a nice heavy coat, having your journal and your pencil, and climbing up a 26 foot ladder at night, and sitting there at the eyepiece, right? It's not really comfortable, right? So what they did here was they said, okay, they knew, they knew if they're looking like at the end of the eyepiece, it's going to be way there. If they move the telescope to look at an object higher up, this thing would be up and come down to a lower level down here. Make that very convenient. So what they did was they measured and calculated that out about 26 feet. So they made it so that the floor that I'm standing on moves up and down, the whole, the whole floor. Okay. Uh, here, as the pier is on the floor attached to the floor below, but the entire floor that I'm on will move up and down. There's four hydraulic jacks that were powered by water. Okay, back in uh, 1888, and that would lift the floor up to take us to where the eyepiece is. The columns, the columns that are around, like here, those are counterweights for the floor. And there's the, the, the floor weighs about 26 tons, okay? So, um, basically what we would do is we'd raise the floor up to where the eyepiece is, and then we'd have another problem because you guys would still be down there, yeah. right? Because you're not on the floor. So, what we could do is have you just come up these stairs to where roughly where the floor was, and then we open the right gate here. And you could just step across the little railing and onto the floor. So that's how you get onto the floor. Uh, the next issue we have is when we looked at the eyepiece, we can see the side of the dome. Okay? Uh, the dome is about 100 tons of steel. Um, it rotates, okay? And it was rotated by the same way using water power and hydraulics. Um, you can see the red rim around the bottom of the dome has wheels. That's what it rotates on. And basically we would rotate this big slit in the top there where the doors are over to the in front of the telescope and we'd open the doors. Okay. Now we'd be able to look out and be able to see what we were looking at. The next problem we have is that the Earth's rotating, which makes the stars move, or appear to move. It's actually us. So to counteract that movement, inside the pier here, we had a motor drive that was built like a, I don't know if you ever look at a grand spot the clock mechanism. It runs on a weight, okay, and gears and counterweights and such. So they could pull up a 500 pound weight into the top of this, release it, and through all the movements it would go through, it would take about four hours to get back to the bottom here. So the telescope could track objects for four hours at a time. And then someone would have to crank a 50 pound, uh, 500 pound weight back up. And then you could observe another four hours. Okay. It was so precise that you could look at an object, you know, start the weight going, look at an object, you know, leave, come back, you know, three hours, 45 minutes later, look at the eyepiece, and that same object would still be in the eyepiece. Okay. So that's basically how they used it back then with no electricity up here. Um, the other thing, if you wanted to move the telescope, uh, to look at an object in a different location. Uh, basically, this white ring that's around the end of the telescope, that's for moving the telescope. And, and what power did they use for moving the telescope? How did you move it? Human muscle moves. Okay. And the telescope weighs about six and a half tons. Okay. The counterweights on the other side are about six and a half tons. So it's about 13 tons of weight to move the telescope. Okay. Uh, if you disengage it from the drives so that the telescope is free to move, you can take a person's can pull that out in the rain and start moving the telescope uh, 13 tons. Okay? It weighs a lot, it moves slowly, and you don't want it to get moving too fast because it weighs 13 tons, and I don't care if you're the biggest person alive, you're not going to be anywhere near 13 tons to be able to stop it easily. Okay, so sometimes people get it rolling and then you see people going like this trying to stop it. And we've actually had people where, uh, where they take the instrument off the end and it changes the weight of the telescope and the telescope goes up. 
and their instant reaction is to grab the white ring because to stop them, but then they go up, and we've had people fall and break their legs. So, but basically, that's that's how the telescope was basically used. It was the top of telescope in the world at the time. Uh, people from all over the world came here to visit it. Uh, the first visitors night they had, if uh, a week after they opened. Uh, it would take about five hours to come up the mountain from San Jose on, on a buggy, on a horse, horse and wagon, okay? The first night, the visitor program they had on a Saturday night, they had over 2,000 people come. So you can imagine the number of horse and buggies that people took that were up here. And the five hour ride up, and when they were done, they had the five hour ride back. So it pretty much took the whole night. Eventually, when you go back down the hill, um, you, about seven miles down, you'll cross, a, you'll cross a bridge over a creek, and you'll see the Cal, the Cal Fire Station there on the left-hand side. And they actually, at one point, they built, actually, a hotel was built there. So people didn't have to do the five-and-a-half-hour trip. They could break it into pieces. They could stay, you only do half a night. 